Today we are taking another look at another nib from the nib box and I think today's lucky winner. If I can get it open and then not drop it. Need like tiny tweezers. Today's is going to be the Leonard 33. So these are nibs made by manuscript and I have not always had the best results with manuscript. Not always a big fan. It's okay though. We are coming into this review with an open mind and an open heart. So this was sketched on Denik paper. If it doesn't work on the Denik, I'm gonna try it on Strathmore plate. But since the Strathmore plate is nicer, I am trying to save it. And we are inking it with FW acrylic ink in Payne's Gray. A little room for myself. I just grabbed a piece of scratch paper, always important. Ooh, this is a ridiculously flexy nib. So we need to be very careful with this. So I am, as you guys now know, somewhat heavy handed. Oh, it's so fine. It wants to catch on every scratch of the paper too. So this is actually intended for Spencerian writing. It's not intended for drawing. And I know a few calligraphers are like, <laughs> why would anybody want to draw with a calligraphy nib? Because how do you discover new gems if you never try anything new? Oop, little bit of splatter there. In fact, I am working on a big helpful nib post for artists, because there is plenty about nibs for calligraphers and plenty about nibs for fountain pen people, but not much about nibs for artists. So I'm working on a big helpful post. So you should keep an eye out for that on natosoup.blogspot.com. And while I was doing my research, I came across a review written by the well-appointed desk for the Coeco dip pin holder, where she said that this uh, holder would help elevate dip pens from like calligraphy and art school. And boy, this is Inktober. A lot of people are using nibs this month for their art. And it was really hard for me not to, not to point out that, hey, you're being rude. But I just thought that was kind of funny how people don't really know what's going on around them because they don't poke their heads out of their own bubbles. I'm guilty of that too. But that's one of the reasons I love researching these things is I make it a point to see how other people use a material differently than I do. And I learned so much. I learned so much from the Postman's Knock, which is another blog. It's a great blog for those of you who are interested in calligraphy, but also for those of you who are interested in dip pen nibs. I learned a lot of great stuff from them the other night. I mean, I was taught nib maintenance while taking advanced inking techniques at SCAD. This is actually a very hard nib to control as an artist for these sort of lines. And it may be that I'm trying to draw my lines too long um, for the nib type. It might be, it's just not the nib for me and this might be great. I have a feeling the more I'm doing these tests, the more I'm like flexi nibs while they seem really fun are really bad for someone like me who's very heavy handed. And you can tell it's a flexi nib because it's got all these cutouts in it. It's also a very fine point nib. And as you guys can see, it is really putting up a lot of ink. And if I were doing this for my own work, I would use a paper towel 
to dab up all those blobs. But since I'm doing this for review, I feel like it's important for you guys to see just how much ink it puts down on the paper, which in a way is kind of wasteful because we don't really need that much ink on the paper and that much ink on a cheap paper is just gonna encourage bleeding and it actually goes through quite a lot of ink. Anyway, learned a lot from the Postman's Knock. And if you're interested in dip nibs, dip pen nibs, even if you're not interested in calligraphy, I highly recommend you take some time and read through some of their posts. I feel like doing research, seeing how other artists do things, seeing how people in other fields do things, I feel like it can only make you a stronger artist because it gives you more options. I also think it's important to read, not to be angry about it, but just to know what other people are saying, to read the, or listen to podcasts by people whose opinions you disagree with, but who are well regarded in their fields. Always important to be abreast of that sort of stuff. I know it takes up a lot of time. I enjoy doing it. So for me, it is a leisure activity as well as I think it should be part of your job. You guys can see my hand is shaking all over. I will zoom in so you can see the Lenart, what? It's Lenart 33, I believe, in action. Also, individual nib reviews are apparently pretty uncommon. So hopefully these little quick nib reviews are really helpful to you guys and I'm trying last year I did a bunch of like popular manga nibs so this year I'm really trying to focus on um, calligraphy nibs that might be hidden gems for artists of course these tests do not do not do much to make me look like a good artist. But I also think trying new materials and testing them out and failing is an important job. Important part of what we do. When I was in grad school, I had this thing where I wouldn't dismiss a material until I'd gotten proficient at it because I felt like my inability to produce what I envisioned in my head with a material was probably contributing to my dislike of a material. And I would love to pick that habit back up again. I think it is an excellent habit, especially for someone who reviews art supplies to have, um, which is why I kind of stick to supplies that I'm very familiar with like watercolor or inking supplies and that way I can give a fair review because I have experience with a variety of the materials but I would love to pick it up for materials I'm less familiar with who the hair turned out really bad yeah Unfortunately, there may be some validity in artists aren't interested in using calligraphy nibs. Zoom out, I know I'm off screen. However, I challenge you guys to tr use these nibs and make beautiful pieces of art and not only prove me wrong, but prove people who say things like that wrong. And considering nibs are like a dollar each and can last a really long time with good care it's really a very small investment to make and I'm not being in my opinion unreasonable by challenging you guys to do that your secret weapon might end up being one of these nibs 
something I would like to learn when I'm a little less double booked on projects is I would actually really like to learn calligraphy, mostly so I can improve my stroke making as you guys can see of course practice makes perfect and there are drills one can do in fact a lot of those drills are very similar to calligraphy drills anyway that is i believe the leonard number 33. i'll dip my hand in ink yeah very very flexy Very prone to railroading as well. You can get some nice flourish sort of lines though. Unless it railroads. Anyway, I hope you guys found this review helpful. I hope you will check out some of my other nib reviews and I hope you'll keep an eye at Nato on natosoup.blogspot.com for that big dip pin overview. Um, if you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments. And if you feel so inspired to try this nib out and make some art, please do share it. I would love to take a peek. So have a great day, guys, and I hope to see you again really soon.